Yesterday on the show, we told you about the stealth warplanes of the Chinese. And tonight, we are getting you the story of Iran's stealth warships. Two of them will soon be deployed to the Persian Gulf. And what do we know about these warships? They reportedly look like this, like catamarans, except they are dangerous. The warships are 65 meters long. They can travel at 45 knots, which is 52 miles per hour or 83 kilometers per hour. They can strike targets that are over 700 kilometers away. And what kind of arms are these stealth warships carrying? Missiles? Air defense systems? These warships are fitted with Iran's new Nawab vertical launch systems. Also, four 20mm triple barreled Gatling guns. There's also a 30mm auto cannon and 16 Sayyad series surface to area missiles. And that's not all. These stealth warships also carry six Abu Mehdi naval cruise missiles. It's not only deadly weapons these warships carry, but also a combat helicopter and three attack boats. Now, these warships were designed by Iran and produced in Iran. Iran is calling them world class. They have been named after the slain Iranian military officers, Shahid Sayyad Shirazi and Martyr Hassan Bagheri. These stealth warships are the second and the third models of Suleimani class vessels. The new warships were handed over to the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, on Monday. Where will they be operating is the next question. These warships are headed towards the Arabian Sea, not too far from the dangerous waters where the Houthis and America-led Navy coalition have been facing off. While Iran is building a dangerous naval fleet, a country that once ruled the waves is now sinking in high tide. What am I talking about? Who can answer this question for me? What is it with the United Kingdom? Nothing seems to be working in its favor. Let me tell you what happened at the end of January. The British Navy was test firing a nuclear missile from a submarine. The test was being carried out off the coast of uh, Florida. The nuclear missile was supposed to fly thousands of kilometers and then land in the Atlantic, somewhere between Brazil and West Africa. But things did not go as planned. On the D-Day, a dummy Trident II was propelled into the air, but the first stage booster did not ignite. The result? The missile left the submarine, went up into the air, and plop, it dropped right next to the submarine. In short, it was a flop show. You see, the British Ministry of Defense is more kutr. It's called the embarrassment and anomaly. It's actually much more than that. It's a disaster. One that should really, really worry the people living in the UK. They should be asking whether their armed forces, the Navy in particular, is even capable of saving them from an enemy attack. That nuclear test missile that was supposed to hit an enemy target sank during the test fire. It had to be fished out of the sea. And let me also tell you here that this is not a one-off misfire. This is the second consequent misfire of the same missile. That's right. Trident's last test was in the year 2016. The missile weared off course. Back in 2016 as well, the test missile was supposed to hit a sea target off the coast of Africa and guess the direction in which the missile went instead? Towards the United States. Had there been a real warhead, the missile would have hit its maker. Time for some background here. The Trident II or Trident D5 nuclear missiles are built by the Americans. These missiles are the mainstay of Britain's strategic nuclear deterrent. A Trident missile has a range of 12,000 kilometers and carry a payload as large as 2,800 kgs. These missiles are over 13 meters long. They weigh over 58,000 kgs and they are ejected from a submarine. How? by using high-pressured gas. The UK's HMS Vanguard-class nuclear submarines carry these missiles. There are four Vanguard-class subs. As per the Royal Navy, in fact, these subs are armed with quote-unquote cutting-edge steam technology. They ensure our ultimate defense. The submarine from which the Trident missile was being fired 
had just had a seven plus year refit. And it goes without saying, it was a failure. Much like a lot else in the UK. The economy, the roads, pothole filled roads, should I say, the Royal Mail. But that's a story for another day. Let's just get back to the state of the British Navy. From once ruling the waves, today it has become a cartoon navy, the laughing stock of the world. Everyone is talking about the Trident flop. Do you think British allies are not concerned? Of course they are. Do you think Britain's enemies are not laughing? Of course they are. The Royal Navy has nowhere to hide. It cannot test fire. How can it take, take on enemies then? It's unfit for war zones. Imagine a nuclear missile landing just inches away from the submarine, one that it was fired from. How does that even happen? And thank God it is a dummy warhead. The British officials tried very hard, in fact, to hide what actually happened on the 30th of January. Britain's Defence Secretary, Grant Shapps, was on board the vessel at the time of the incident. He did not say a word about that disaster. This is Admiral Sir Ben Key. He is Britain's first sea lord. He too was present when the trident was misfired. This man as well kept mum. But the British press broke the story. And questions are now being raised naturally about Britain's nuclear deterrence. Is the UK even in the position to defend itself? The Labour Party has asked for assurances. This is John Healy. He is the British Shadow Defence Secretary. And here's what he has said, I'm quoting. Reports of a Trident test failure are concerning. The Defence Secretary will want to reassure the Parliament that this test has no impact on the effectiveness of the UK's deterrent operation. And what has the Defence Secretary said? This is Shap's statement. Let me quote. Let me, in fact, read some of the lines out loud. The test reaffirmed the effectiveness of the UK's nuclear deterrent, in which the government has absolute confidence. The submarine and crew were successfully certified and will rejoin the operational cycle as planned. On this occasion, an anomaly did occur, but it was event-specific and there are no implications for the reliability of the wider Trident missile systems and stockpiles. Nor are there any implications for our ability to fire our nuclear weapons, should the circumstances arise in which we need to do so. That's a joke, isn't it? What else do you call a situation where the government of a country has to reassure the people that, look, our nuclear weapons can fire, that they will fire when needed. It's like the Chinese selling defective electronics. Which reminds me, given what's happened, I think Australia as well should ask for assurances because why not? The UK is promising to build for Australia what the UK's Ministry of Defence calls the largest, most advanced and most powerful attack submarines ever operated by the Royal Navy. The UK is also promising to quote-unquote combine world-leading sensors, design and weaponry in one vessel. This was part of a statement released in 2023. And today, it can barely fire nuclear warheads from its own submarines. How then does it plan to provide nuclear submarines or functional nuclear submarines to Australia? UK's Vanguard class submarines are the largest submarines manufactured in the UK. They can hold up to 16 intercontinental ballistic missiles and can carry up to eight Trident rockets, 40 nuclear warheads. But just tell me one thing, what can the Royal Navy's do with the math if the nuclear missile fails to fire when needed? Doesn't add up, does it? The last time the British Navy managed to carry out a successful test of the Trident missile was in the year 2012. It's been 12 years. Guess how many Prime Ministers have entered or left 10 Downing Street since? Five. Like I was telling you, AUKUS partners should really be concerned. Australia is planning to double its naval strength. It is preparing to take on the Chinese. How is the UK contributing? What will the British do in case the AUKUS navies have to fight the Chinese? The British Royal Navy will likely have to sit out, which explains why Britain's effort to join the court is also not being taken seriously. 
how will it play any role in the Indo-Pacific? Britain does not have a navy that can be relied upon. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.